Today we're going to be discussing the swing plane and I'm going to give you a couple real simple checkpoints and drills that you can run through to improve your swing plane, not only in your backswing but your downswing also. Make sure you check out this video. So in today's video, as mentioned there in the intro, we're going to be talking about swing plane. Really talking about where your hands and arms are and the influence of your shoulders, not only in the back swing, but the start of the down swing. Now I've obviously set up something here with the tour stick running up and it was just above my trail shoulder and I'll talk you through why. I'm using here the swing plate, but you could just push a couple of alignment rods so if you stick two together, shove them into the ground. If you're on the driving range, I'd put a range bucket out in front and just use the holes of the range bucket to push your tour sticks through. Um, I set this, as I said, you can see diagonally, not vertically, not horizontal, and it's just above my trail shoulder, so for me, my right shoulder. Now, what I was trying to get at the top of the backswing was my lead arm almost matching this line, that I wasn't too flat with my arms, where my lead arm's really glued across my chest, and my shoulders have straightened or my back is straight and my lead shoulder has moved up too much you can see that would get my lead arm very low in the back swing and i wasn't so high that i was hitting this cane with my lead arm by about halfway three quarters of the way back here there are some golfers and i have filmed vi filmed videos if i put my teeth in talking about steeper back to shallower down but if we're talking about making the simplest movement if we can get pretty much on plane to on plane obviously we're not going to be far off from that a little higher on the way back a little lower on the way down great i wouldn't really want to see perhaps the opposite movement very low and then very steep on the downswing but the feel here was that my lead arm was almost matching this black cane this stick alignment rod here, and it's touching almost the front of my forearm, but by the time I get to the top of the golf swing, it's not touching my bicep or, or middle of a sort of elbow very early here. And of course, I'm not missing it altogether. So that's my back swing, just helping set my lead arm almost across my chest. And as a good checkpoint, if I could get my lead arm through or just above my trail shoulder when I visually look at it in the mirror or on video that would be a real good checkpoint so through the trail shoulder or just above it would be great at the top of the backswing now in the downswing my focus you probably saw me just do the exercise before I hit the ball of almost posing here looking in the mirror that I've got behind me but I was trying to get the sensation my trail shoulder staying on this line or slightly behind the line that I wasn't getting my trail shoulder moving out too early. So those who are suffering with an over the top steeper movement, we tend to see the trail shoulder moving forwards internally too quickly at the start of the downswing. And you can see visually that means my trail shoulder has passed this line. So I'm trying to get the feeling my shoulder and elbow move down and in front of me. It is not in front of me first. So it's down and then in front of me rather than out in front of me at the start of the downswing, that transitional movement. So it's almost giving me that sensation, trail shoulder stem on this black line and allowing the club to obviously swing from a more in to out path. So again, this may even be in the way if I was very extreme with my club path. I'm really talking about my arm plane, where my arms are in the backswing and the start of the downswing, but that obviously has an influence over where the club is. So if I hit one again, match my lead arm to this shaft. Now, for you guys wanting to know the angle I've set this, ugh, I've got it around 65 degrees angle, and you can see it's starting just outside and past the golf ball, and then it's running just above my trail shoulder. Lead arm almost matching it, dissecting that shoulder or just above it, and then feeling like my trail shoulder stays on the line or behind the line, not in front of it early. Now, 
one's a little left to target. It can be quite off-putting, but the contact, the strike there felt really good. I'm hitting here a seven iron, but this would be relevant with different golf clubs. Obviously, with a driver, I'm standing slightly further away from the golf ball, but the same thing would still be relevant. You just need to extend the canes and the sticks. So you can still set that through that trail shoulder just above the trail shoulder. As I've got it, you just need some longer sticks stuck together or to extend this plane mate that I've got here. There we go. I called it a plane mate, swing plate, sorry. Lead arm matching the black line, trail shoulder staying this side of it on the start of the downswing. So really gonna help my path. That one felt more on target, started a little bit more right. So you'll see here I'm hitting more of a draw pattern to get that ball starting more right of target for me as a right-handed golfer. I would perhaps look at the club face position. Um, for me, when I'm overdrawing it, starting it too straight, missing left, I tend to just need to start with that face, that little bit open, closer to where I want the golf ball to start. So this is perhaps going to help me with that more in to out path. If I just open that club face up a little bit more for me, thinking about where I want the ball to start, that can help. But lead arm matching the black line, trail shoulder staying behind or underneath that line rather than moving out too early. So I really like this as an exercise. And I think it works quite well when you're doing some some mirror work, some video work, just to give you a, a reference point, a checkpoint. Of course, on video, you could just draw the line and get it again through just above the, the trail shoulder and have a little look at that. So that one definitely started more right to target. Almost didn't draw back enough, but all I changed there was really that club face position. So if you were a fader slicer and you're starting to change your path and you see a different shape of shot, don't panic. Just start thinking about the influence of the club face affecting the start line there. But I, I like that exercise. I think it really gives you a very good visual of where the lead arm should be at the top of the backswing and how the trail shoulder should start to move a little bit down rather than straight out in front of you that so many golfers do with that steep over the top movement. If that video has helped, hit the thumbs up. Put some comments below. Great to hear from you guys. Any videos you'd like me to film that you think are relevant for you. Some suggestions are always welcome. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. At least two instructional videos a week. Right now, YouTube is suggesting the next video of mine that's relevant for you. And it's just here. Click on it and check it out.